What is up, y'all? So I wanted to do a Wagoneer update, the Shag Wagon. Um, quite a bit has happened um, since I moved, and it's just kind of been quiet happening in the corner. Um, so first off, old axles. So the passenger side, low pinion, and then the offset passenger side, low pinion, 44s are out. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. I posted them up for cheap and no one seems to want them. So they may end up under the rat rod, um, willies once I get to that point, but I put some JK axles underneath here, right? Um, which should be perfect. This is just going to be a daily driver. This isn't a wheeling rig. I don't need it to be extreme. I just want it to be comfortable and I can drive, right? I am looking for a two door Cherokee and I want to build that into a rig. Throw some forties on there, cut out the wheel wells, slam it down as low as I can. Woo. One thing at a time. So I got this guy. Um, I had already coil swapped the front in the last videos, if you remember, but I had just done something that was generic that kind of sat underneath here and it went to its own coil perch. Now I went ahead and actually got some Artec Industries TJ coil perches, which work perfect. Um, now I'm just kind of playing with what coil I need to put on here, right? To get that right, correct height and wide and ride quality. So these are some JK three and a halfs with two spacers um, up top. So I'm um, trying to find a JL four and a half. I think that would be a good height for what I want to get and give me a good ride quality that I'm looking for. So we'll see. Um, I'm just kind of grabbing stuff as we take them off at the shop to see. So I'm not just wasting money. But I uh, got a JK front axle, still have it three links. Um, pretty much just didn't, you know, raised uh, flip steering, uh, gussets, lower control arm brackets. So I just did new ones because a lot of it's just kind of special custom, right? Um, so they're not in the regular JK spot. They're close, but they're actually outward just a little bit more. And I have them a little bit higher so I can get a little bit more, um, stretch out of it. I'm using some JL Synergy front lower control arms. Um, the custom made upper control arm. It had my old one and then I just added some, uh, steel tube around it. And then the moto built generic kit so I can put it on top of the pumpkin there. Um, it is driver side now which means transfer case is not gonna work, right? I have that Borg Werner, which is a passenger side front and rear. Um, I have a T31 to put in there that already had a slip, lo slip, <clears throat> slip yoke eliminator put onto it. So I'm gonna make that up to the, four, uh, uh, to the TH400 and I have a new, I have to pull it and then rebuild it because I have to change the output shaft. It's like a huge ass 13 inch long 10 spline coming out of it. And I think it's like a 21 or a 23. It's been a while since I looked, but I have it on the ground over there. So I'll be able to swap him out, um, get that transmission rebuilt, which it's in fantastic condition. So it's really just to get the new output in there. Um, the new JK brakes. I'm gonna see about adding, um, upgrading the brakes on the actual uh, Jeep itself to see if it can handle the additional or if I don't need to, cool. Um, the rear, this is my little DIY kit right now. Uh, cause I'm waiting on getting some control arms that I had ordered. So I just needed something to get them mocked up. We had some Rubicon Express off of a JK at the shop that I took, cut, extended, and made a little sick gusset that will get my links right. But, uh, so it's a C-channel frame. I actually took this and I still need to actually drill some holes. I'm going to put some tube that welds on this side and welds on the outside and then do two more over here. So it helps actually box the frame a little bit more. Normally I would run some, um, steel inside here and weld it to this and then put some notches on here and then where it lines up on here, I would weld that. So it actually boxes everything in, but I don't really need to on this one and it takes a lot of time and steel is not cheap. So I'm just gonna drill a couple holes, run some tube through it. That'll help with the, tor the twisting and the torsional and this will kind of be the plate to help hold this Artec bracket to JK rear axle, um, put an Artec truss on it and then JK coil perches that I put in the position that I needed to put my coil. I still, again, am looking to figure out what the hell coil I'm gonna be using. It is all just a matter of tense, test it. Nope, not correct, take it off, try again. Synergy long arms in the rear. These are JK two-door long arms um, that I connected to some JL rock crawler long arm brackets. So some, I'm really just picking up shit. Like literally I pick up at the shop. Um, Artec TJ coil perches work perfect. There's a bend right there, helps gusset it. Um, I'll be doing some 1310 drive shafts to get them to line up, some new shock brackets, and I'm going to be doing some, uh, Fox shocks once I figure out the right height and I can actually figure out what needs to be, um, what shock I need. 
So that's cool. Um, I did an S10 uh, gas tank a while back. I'm not sure if that's been on a video. I recently just broke this strap. I guess I was over tightening it and it popped off because all these straps are super freaking cheap. But um, he's in the back here now, so that's why I don't have I have all that space underneath there. That was a super easy swap. Um, I have I have fuel injected it, so I'm running a Holly Sniper kit up there. Um, that was awesome. So electronic fuel pump and everything. So, and then the S10. Obviously, I'm using the S10 pump, which is more than enough to handle a 360 fuel injection. Um, I have uh, the Rock Jock Anti Rock. This is used, this is in position, the stock position. I think it was the JK kit that actually made work with this. Um, but now it's in a situation where now I have a coil bucket right here as opposed to down there. Can't fit it. So I'm actually going to be cutting these guys off and running it across uh, right here. And then I'll have to get some longer ones um, if need be, which I think I will, um, to actually line up with the axle. And then steering, it's going to be a one. Uh, a RPM one ton kit. So it's going to be just like this solid aluminum with one ton tie rod ends. I don't need the two and a half ton kit. I just, like I said, it's just going to be a cruiser. So go to the store, get groceries, come home. Front bumper I made a while ago. I need to refinish it because at the time I didn't have a proper sander grinder. I was using a flap disc, so there's lines. So I just need to get everything smoothed out. Um, now that the shop actually has a uh, CNC plasma table, I'm going to make a new one out of 3 sixteenths. Uh, rockers had some serious rust underneath them, so I actually went ahead and um, did some two by three uh, quarter inch thick steel that's welded to the frame. So it can be used as a rocker if need be. I'm probably gonna get a set of those or make something similar to like the, uh, the Poison Spider Ricochet rockers where they actually just weld the tube right here and have two steps. So probably gonna do something like that. Um, I think that's about it. It's like some big changes, but not big changes. You know, it's just slow. I dished all my money into a house and all sorts of different vehicles. So I'm just kind of trying to get this one going now so I can get it off the rack. Um, decided to do the exact same wheels that I had before, if you didn't notice that. Um, same black Rhino wheels, except now they're a five lug instead of a six lug. And then obviously Ridge Grapplers. Another 285, 75, which is like a 30. Four, I want to say it is. So it's just a narrower but taller, and I don't need anything big. I am potentially wanting to put 38s on there, but we'll see.